Hi everyone, this is Real World Audio and this is the series on Let's Build a Single-Ended Triode Amplifier. And um, I'm going to make this really versatile, really accessible for as many of you as possible. And I'm going to show several different versions that you can build and it's going to be, uh, depending on your implementation, you can either build it as the mother of all budget amplifiers or the king of tone. It's your choice and your wallet's choice. So the schematics will be really easy, very straightforward. And, uh, and uh, the first one that I'm uh, going to suggest you is the darling version the original version and uh, which was published in sound practices issue 15 and it was written by bob danielak he was the one who figured out the schematics and the vacuum tube combinations for this amplifier and uh, and it really got tremendous attention um, back then about uh, 20 years ago and but and uh, and some of you would say well, why are you giving us such an old design well guys uh, all of the triode amplifiers you see all of those designs go back at least 50 60 70 sometimes 80 years so giving you something that's 20 years old is actually pretty new so don't be so down about it and uh, I'm, I'm going to show you the Darling Amp because uh, I have had uh, 20 years of experience with Darling Amps and it's not just me, but uh, me and my buddies, we had a little Darling Circle running here on our island and, uh, and we all had exceedingly good experiences and that's why I'm taking you on this journey and I'm not going to let you chase... Uh, a new dream that I'm going to plan for my 71A direct heated uh, vacuum tube. That one I never played around with. It's going to be something new. I'm going to have to figure it out and uh, I'm going to make uh, mistakes along the way. You always do. Uh, when you try something completely new, it's never going to be the big final statement at, at the first try you always going to have to play around with it for several years before you find something that is uh, truly what i can recommend for you to build and i don't want you to chase uh, that dream with me to having to uh, constantly redesign things get new parts and and that just leads to tremendous frustration i rather show you something that i have experienced that works fantastically well and it can be either built as the most expensive i mean sorry as the cheapest <laughs> Uh, vacuum tube amplifier build that's uh, possible and the easiest and the simplest so the single darling uses four vacuum tubes two input tubes two power tubes and that's it uh, rectification is uh, solid state and it's a capacitor coupled so the voltages are not that high on it so the plate voltage is, is uh, let's see let's scroll down to the schematics 265 volts which is uh, pretty safe i would say it still can give you a nasty jolt but it will just give you maybe an ouch moment and if we are looking at the direct coupled version with the 400 volts that will give you a i need to think about uh, i'm so happy i'm still alive if you get a shock from that so this i can much more recommend to as a as a first project and you see this is bob danielak schematics i'm going to uh, refine it a little bit for you because if you read this uh, publication 
uh, there's the link to it i will post it uh, on the video so you can check out this uh, sound practices uh, page you can also go to the web page of sound practices and download it from them directly and and here it describes that basically he has a separate filament transformer all of the filaments are running from a single 12 volt, volt secondary transformer the input tubes are run in series and uh, it also has a little power transformer and he uses a full uh, it's it, it's called a, a great bridge not full wave a great bridge so it's bridge rectification with four diodes i'm going to recommend to you a full wave rectification instead and i'm compiling a parts list that you can use that you can uh, um, that makes the search easy for you i will be using mauser as a source because mauser has presence in both us and europe and uh, in, and they basically have uh, most things that you will need for this amplifier you can also use digikey that's the other source i'm using a lot and basically you can buy most of these components from either Mauser or DigiKey. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to do some things different. I mean, recommend them different from what Bob Daniel did because he built this amp using spare parts in his junk cabinet. So what we have here, uh, more freedom because it's going to be uh, a new project. So you have to buy parts and then if you buy let's just you buy parts which work a little better so instead of the bridge configuration we will use full wave configuration so you will need only two diodes and it will sound better instead here he has a very strange uh, capacitance values 200 microfarad for first capacitor 60 microfarad for second capacitor in the pi filter what you want is to have both of them at the same value or have the second capacitor bigger than the first. So here he had a, uh, just read it in the paper why he did this, but he had to do, build it this way to put the 200 first because if he swapped them, then it would hum too much. So I'm going to give you a different recommendation for there. And uh, for those of you who want it to build really on the cheap, use a resistor there for uh, filtering. And if you can afford $15, then put a choke there. I'm going to give you the parts number for that. And uh, if you want to build it deluxe, you can put a much bigger choke and uh, but uh, as i as i'm telling you you can build this project on an extreme budget but that doesn't mean that it will sound like a, like a transistor radio maybe that you bought in the 60s in russia or something like that it will still sound a really fantastic amplifier uh, within its capabilities because it's going to give you a little less than one watt of output power. Um, so here, this is the bread and butter of the schematics. We have the input tube and the power tube, and they are coupled together through a capacitor. And our input tube, this shows here a variable resistor, so you can put in a pot there to use as a volume control. So you can build it as an integrated amplifier. I'm going to give you the parts number for that volume pot as well. But I have to warn you that if you use a volume control, that's going to impact the sound quality a lot. But of course, if you are on a budget, you do not have any other choice. Use the volume control. If you have a dedicated preamplifier, then instead of this volume control, we will put there a resistor. 
I would suggest something between uh, 100k to 200k to use there instead of this uh, pot and then here uh, this is the output of the vacuum tube and that will be a capacitor uh, if we want to keep it super budget then we can use a small one microfarad de-sealing capacitor for that which is pretty cheap and Mauser sells it. Uh, Mauser doesn't have any uh, high quality audio quality coupling capacitors. You will need to go other sources to get one if you want to step up. And I have to tell you that the quality of this capacitor affects the sound a lot. So if you don't go with the basic recommendation, then you can jump up in the sound quality quite a bit. And here, this is our power tube, the 1626, and as you see, it has uh, the plate connected to the output transformer. And that's where my output transformer video comes in, where I recommend you output transformer. I would really recommend not to use the cheapest ad core that I suggested for $23 each, the tiniest ad core, but go for the one size bigger ad core, that's the 7.6k primary, and it's the 30 something dollar. Please, if possible, try to use that as the uh, lowest quality option possible. If you absolutely must, go with the smallest component, that will also work, but just going just one step bigger will make a big, big, big jump in the sound. And of course, if you want an amplifier that is capable to be placed next to a Yamamoto 45 amp or to any of the uh, commercial vacuum tube amplifiers, costing maybe three, five, ten thousand dollars, then you have to forget about using a cheap output transformer. You have to use there a Hashimoto or a Lundal, maybe go for a Tango. And of course, a pair of Hashimotos is a thousand dollars, and that gives you a clue why a quality triode amplifier starts around three thousand dollar when we are talking about single ended amplifiers so what else for simplicity's sake look at this uh, the uh, cathode bias resistor for both of the tubes this is showing the other channel okay so when you read the schematics this is one channel and that's the other channel below and on one channel it shows the cathode bias resistor with a bypass capacitor on it. And as you see, there's a single bypass uh, cap and a single resistor for the pair of the tubes. So the two channels, left and right, share the same resistor, both for the output tube and input tube. And that's for economy. Uh, uh, for getting the cheapest uh, result. If you want to go one step uh, higher, then you need to use separate resistors and separate bypass capacitors for both. It's not much of a difference, but it gives you uh, a significantly improved results. So as you see, there's tremendous freedom, and this is just the single darling that give, will give you less than, one, less than one watt output power. However, if you build it with high quality output transformers, you use a choke in the uh, power supply, uh, and you use high quality uh, filament transformer and power transformer, then you will have a truly superb amplifier that's going to be standing on its own against any competition. 
and you can uh, bring it over to your friend who has a ten thousand dollar single handed triode amplifier play it with his speakers that are built to match single handed triode amps have 10 buddies around and you will have at least three or four out of 10 who will prefer your darling versus that super expensive commercial triode that your friend is using and that's because uh, when you have a high quality single-handed triode amplifier then uh, the difference between the different amps between the different triode amps is different flavor different personality and uh, i cannot say one is better than the other they have different voicing it's like singing to a different singer and people have their preferences some prefer nikolai yaurov others uh, prefer gregor Jozef or or any of your bassist singers uh, that's the same thing with amps as well so thank you for tuning and we will go into it deeper uh, in the next episodes bye bye